thank you for uh, inviting me for this particular lecture just uh, let me have the slides just just hold on mm. okay so once once again thanks uh, uh, rajiv uh, shalini for giving me this opportunity thanks arvind for that uh, introduction uh, my my lecture has been made very uh, simple because already there is a, 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 a wonderful preface of this lecture by dr das uh, and uh, some some of the slides may be overlap between his lecture and my lecture now pancreas conundrum the pancreas from which diabetes tail began it continues to be a, a mystery organ and this is pancreas and pancreatic fat is going to be focus of my lecture around which other things will revolve specifically we know so little about pancreatic fat and metabolic event cascades that it produces and whatever it is we know today is spread out in this seven part lecture so number 1 is pancreatic pan, uh, pancreatic fat and non alcoholic fatty pancreatic disease now this is the uh, anatomical sketch of the pancreas uh, you can see many types of tissues here but what we are specifically interested are two types of tissues intracellular lipid accumulation and then the pancreatic pancreatic adipocytes so here and here both are important and both produce a cascade of events which ultimately lead to metabolic problems uh so this is important and this is important now this is the first time a uh, term non alcoholic fatty pancreatic disease was introduced in 2007 by an uh, this is a paper by an indian in united states who took two types of mice uh lean mice and obese mice and you can see the uh, pancreatic tissue of lean mice and obese mice side by side here uh on the right side are obese uh mice and their pancreatic tissue and you can see the fat infiltration in the pancreatic tissue and triglyceride in this experiment represented 11% of pancreatic fat in lean mice compared to 67% of pancreatic fat in obese mice and you can see it's the same here intra lobular fat intra lobular fat and total pancreatic fat here there's a remarkable difference between the two and at this time the term non alcoholic fatty pancreatic disease and non alcoholic steatopancreatic uh, pancreatic disease was introduced a part two the pancreatic fat relationship between bmi and glucose and i, I will again refer to uh, earlier studies uh, a decade back and this is from my uh, institution where i i was a faculty ut southwestern medical center at dallas um where they experimented with the the in animal models and then subsequently in uh, human beings and found that the uh, as far as pancreas triglyceride content which they estimated by nmr spectroscopy uh increased as the bmi increased. so this is very evident from the slide on the right side on the left side you can see pancreas and the, uh, the voxel of uh, is right here voxel of the nmr spectroscopy which can accurately measure the pancreatic or hepatic fat so this was uh, early studies showing a relationship between the bmi and the pancreatic triglyceride content and then subsequently uh, the in rats it was found that as the pancreatic triglyceride content increase oh, look at this the in in uh, the fat mice it is increasing and the blood sugar is also increasing so the previous slide showed the relationship between the bmi and pancreatic fat and here pancreatic triglyceride content and trig and and blood glucose so these early studies showed that it is clearly related to blood glucose and hyperglycemia will worsen if pancreatic fat increases now what how does pancreatic fat accumulate as far as the aging is concerned and what are the cut offs of pancreatic fat and what is the prevalence of non alcoholic fatty pancreatic disease now this is a busy slide 
but I'll make it very simple for you. This slide shows uh, the decade-wise uh, distribution of pancreatic volume, total parenchymal volume, pancreatic fat volume, and pancreatic fat and parenchymal ratio. Now, if we leave aside uh, the pancreatic fat, pancreatic ratio, and just look at the pancreatic volume and pancreatic fat, there is a difference. So pancreatic volume decreases as one goes older and pancreatic fat volume increases. So there is a discrepancy between the two and we shall see what happens in patients with diabetes subsequently. Uh, and of course, this is different in patients who are obese, who are overweight and who are lean. And you can see on the right side, the pancreatic volume and uh, uh, the, the uh, total parenchymal volume and total fat volume are higher in those people who are obese versus overweight and lean people. Now, this is the summary of anatomy in patients with diabetes. The mean pancreatic volume was found to be 33% less in type 2 diabetes than in people with normal glucose tolerance. So in patients with diabetes, the pancreatic volume was 33% less, which is similar to the aging. And if you see here, aging, the pancreatic volume has gone down. And similarly, in patients with diabetes, while pancreatic triglyceride content was 23% greater and so similar as far as aging is concerned, it with aging it goes up, with diabetes it goes up. Um, another very interesting point is that in type 2 diabetes, pancreas has typically involuted a serrated border and which can be seen in the next slide. You can see here, you know, a serrated border, there are uh, other anatomical landmark, but on the right side, in the right panel, you see it is very beautifully outlined in patients with diabetes as compared to pay people who have normal glucose tolerance. So you can see serrated border in a 58-year-old female, 64-year-old male, and so on, versus the people with normal glucose tolerance. So maybe it is due to increase in the irregular uh, control due to the fat deposition uh, uh, as, as uh, the uh, patient becomes hyperglycemic there is a fat deposition and there is irregular control. Now, what is the prevalence of NAFLD? Remember, this is this is this subject is nascent, is a new subject. Hence, there is not much of a data, and uh, there is hardly any data from India. And I shall uh, produce some some of the data which we have accumulated. Now, pooling data of NAFPD from eleven studies of twelve thousand individuals yielded that pool prevalence was thirty three percent. Now, this is uh, uh, a, a no-brainer. Actually, whatever is the prevalence of NAFLD, the same is almost similar is the prevalence of fatty pancreatic disease. And what is the cutoff? How much is the percentage of fat uh, which should be normal in the pancreas? Now, pooling data on pancreatic fat percentage from nine studies, uh, the weight mean and weight standard deviation were 4.48% and 0.87% respectively. And normal pancreatic fat cutoff point was 6.2% on magnetic resonance imaging. Now, remember, uh, the as far as the NFLD is concerned, in liver, the normal is 5%. And in pancreas, these people said it is 6.2%. But I'm sure we will hear from other people also on this topic. Now, part four. Uh, which is the main part and relating pancreatic fat, hepatic fat and fatune A and to insulin resistance, what Dr. Das was trying to say. Now, a little bit on the fatune A, Dr. Das mentioned a lot of hepatokines, but I'll only concentrate on one and which is fatune A because this is the most important of the hepatokine. Now, uh, here you see liver and here you see hepatocytes. The, the, if there is a high glucose levels in the blood, increase in the saturated fatty acid, then two pathways are activated, ERK and NFK beta. And then fatuin A is increased in the blood. Look at this, fatuin A is increased. And fatuin A uh, 
this hepatokine impairs beta cell function. This is a major driver for impairment of beta cell function. The downstream is insulin significant uh, are, are uh, moderated by kinase reaction initiated by insulin on insulin receptor, ty tyrosine kinase, autophosphorylation, and also there is some effect on GLUT4. Once this happens, the myocyte insulin receptor Myocyte insulin resistance, adipocyte insulin resistance all go up and also fetuin A has propensity to activate macrophages. I'll, I'll come to that in a in couple of slides. Uh, what is interesting is high fetuin A label cause insulin resistance and low fetuin A co uh, cause the heart failure and vascular calcification, both detrimental effects but because of high or low fetuin A levels. Now, this is a very, very uh, interesting slide because on the top of the slide, you see a clean beta cell. So, I uh, sorry, islets. Uh, the islets are very clean. There is, the, there is no fat cell. On the lower panel, you see the fat infiltrating the beta cell, which is uh, evident here. So, you see the, the fat infiltrating here. And this is the uh, this is the islet and the fat cells are infiltrating and there is a, a huge amount of inflammatory cells. So the moment the there is a fatty pancreas, fat infiltration in the islet, then the there is an increase in the cytotoxic cytokines and inflammation around it. So this is the, a summary si slide from the previous discussion. Healthy liver. There's a decrease in or decrease levels of uh, fetinae and also palmitate. So resting macrophages remain rested and normal glucose insulin secretion. The moment fatty liver occurs, the fetuin A levels go up and they act through two pathways, tall like receptor 4 and an independent pathway and which causes inflammation. So resting macrophages are activated to all which produce pro-inflammatory changes and also inflammatory cytotoxic cytokines. And you look at this. These are the, the, the activated macrophages and which ultimately lead to impaired in the glucose induced insulin secretion. So insulin resistance and insulin secretion, both pathways are affected by the fatty liver, hepatokine, pancreatic fat, infiltration of fat in the islet. Also, palmitate causes beta cell apoptosis, so result is devastating and which causes insulin uh, secretory defect, insulin resistance and increase in the blood glucose. So both endocrine and exocrine pancreatic function may be affected by the pancreatic fat and there may be a chance that these people may develop pancreatic cancer as well. So look at this. This is one study uh, which shows CT image of 63-year-old male, uh, relatively lean person. Pancreas showed the fat in the pancreas. And this participant had pancreatic endocrine impairment. They did a C-peptide immunoreactive label and also pancreatic exocrine impairment. So PABA levels, uh, PABA test was done. So 33% had endocrine dysfunction and also some had exocrine dysfunction. So both may coexist. But also it is possible that this may be one factor leading to pancreatic cancer. So this much of discussion, we knew that there is a lipid accumulation, there is a in intralobular uh, section, intra interlobular fat accumulation, uh, increased adipokine, but in the background of possibly the KRAS activation, smoking, carcinogen, <coughs> there may be precancerous region which are further activated by this fat in the pancreas, inflammation, proliferation and leading to pancreatic cancer, which may be one consequence of the fatty pancreas. Now, wh what about the fat pancreatic volume and fat in uh, various ethnic groups? Now, look at uh, the 
normal pancreatic volume in this particular study, they calculated between 71 to 83 centimeter, cubic centimeter. But they also listed our study here, which we did some time back. We looked at volume in normal and uh, patients and non-diabetic patient uh, subjects and diabetic patient. So it is different in different ethnic groups. So this is they, they've given a range, but range uh, some some other the uh, the values are outside this range. Look at this, fifty three only in our non diabetic uh, subjects and twenty six percent higher in diabetic. So this is a, this is this is opposed to what we have discussed earlier. Then diabetic volume may go up, go down. Here in our cases, the volume was up. And look at this in Canada, in Japan in South Korea, in UK. So, so the volume may be ethnically directed and depending on metabolic perturbation. Now, for example, look at here, the Koreans versus Caucasian, pancreatic fat content in Korean was 22% greater than in Caucasian and this was related to insulin resistance. Now, part seven, and that's where uh, the clinician should actually focus which modality could decrease pancreatic fat and what is it significant. So these are, these are the, the summary slide and which modalities can decrease pancreatic fat. Hypocaloric diet, I'll show you in a minute. Exercise, metformin, there is a query here, GLP-1 receptor analog, there is a plus or query, LDLT inhibitor, these, the evidence continues to evolve here. And bariatric surgery, definitely. Now look at this. This is the leading study which led to the, the concept of reversal of diabetes, 11 obese patients with type 2 diabetes, they were given markedly hypocaloric diet followed up for 1, 4 and 8 weeks. And look at this, fast, fasting plasma glucose normalized within the first week. And hepatic triglyceride content decreased from 12.8 to 2.9, a 10% drop in 8 weeks. And also pancreatic triglyceride content decreased from 8.2. So not much in the decrease, but even this much of decrease, the author said is responsible for reversal of that. Now, this was replicated in direct study and we all know about direct study, but what is important to know that while the weight decrease in most of the participants in direct study, which is given here, the fasting plasma glucose decreased in many people, but did not decrease in some people and increased in some people. So there are people who are responders and there were people who are non-responders and there were people who are relapsers. So what happened to hepatic triglyceride, pancreatic fat, etc. in these three group of people, which is uh, shown in the right side. Uh, if you look at the liver fat here, responders mark decrease in liver fat, non-responders and relapsers hardly any. Similarly, if you look at pancreatic fat, similar story. In fact, in relapses, hardly any decrease in the pancreatic fat. And if you look at the, uh, the uh, palmitic acid content, similar, markedly de uh, decrease in the responders and increase in relapses where you remember palmitic acid uh, can cause apoptosis of beta cell. So here is a role of both liver fat as well as pancreatic fat. And this is particularly important as far as reversal of diabetes is concerned. Now, what drug as far as SGLT2 inhibitors are concerned? We had some discussion about the impact of frozen and liver fat and so on, but hardly anybody in the world has tried to reduce pancreatic fat using SGLT2 inhibitor. And this is our study. Uh, Journal of Clinical Endocrinology Metabolism, April, uh, and we took overweight patients, 20 to 50 years, uncontrolled diabetes on stable dose of metformin and sulfonylureas for eight weeks, and on ultrasound grade two fatty liver, we did the estimation of hepatic and pancreatic fat measured with MRI proton density fat fracture. So look at this, this is a voxel, Nine voxels were taken in the liver and three voxels were taken in the pancreas. This is a region of interest of voxel. And look at one such report, right lobe, how much is the percentage fat 
left lobe, how much is the percentage fat, and how much is the fat in the pancreas. Now, this uh, this protocol over, you see, this protocol was the um, the um, over a period of time, eight weeks to twelve weeks, led to decrease in the skin fold thickness. Now, this is subcutaneous fat decrease. And also, a decrease in the fasting insulin level, PP insulin level, and C-peptide level. But more importantly, liver fat decreased markedly. And look at this. The reduction from 15 to 10%, not as much as the low-calorie fat uh, the diet study, which was 10%, but 5% in this study. And pancreatic fat from 7.5 to 5.9%, which is 1.5% in limb study, low calorie diet study, it was 1.8%. So it was nearing there. And so reversal of diabetes could be possible using drugs. And we, for the first time in the world, we tried to re reduce pancreatic fat using a drug. So this is the conclusion of uh, the lecture. Several studies have demonstrated a link between pancreatic fat and impaired glucose metabolism as well as pancreatic fat and type 2 diabetes. In general, pancreatic volume decreases with age and in diabetes. So with age it decreases and in diabetes it decreases. But what happens to Indians? In Indians, we don't know. While pancreatic fat increases with both. Ethnic differences in pancreatic volume fat have been reported. Research in India is negligible and we are going forward with our research and we'll be reporting a couple of studies in the next two, three months. Fatty A is a key metabolic regulator causing effect on pancreas and multiple other tissues and responsible for insulin resistance, hyperglycemia and with palmitate beta cell apoptosis. Pancreatic fat deposition may lead to defective insulin secretion apart from insulin resistance and different approaches such as hypocaloric diet, exercise, bariatric surgery and pharmacological intervention as has been shown by us can reduce pancreatic fat content and decrease in the pancreatic and hepatic fat and decrease in fatty A could lead to reversal of the diabetes. So once again, uh, Rajiv. And uh, Shalini, thank you for, thank for you. giving me this opportunity and thanks for your patience.